All right, I thought I'd just do a quick video of my uh, drag strap loop I made. So, uh, for my Effective 5 Roadster. And uh, it's actually fairly easy. There's a couple designs out there um, that you can buy that bolt to the transmission. Or there's the weld-in, which I think is a popular one too, where you weld to the four inch uh, tubes here. So what I did is I just bought a piece of quarter inch by two flat bar steel and I actually just uh, fabbed this while I just bent it. I had to use a, a torch, I used a map gas actually, and did some trigonometry to get these angles right so I could get it close to the drive shaft. And then the, the beauty of this is I'm just using half inch bolt hardware to bolt through where uh, uh, the control arms are. And uh, you know, it's a pretty, I think it's a pretty nice way to do it because it, uh, you don't have to weld that and you know, this is rock solid. And then as far as the loop itself, I didn't even try to bend this. Um, this is a, uh, well, I forget the manufacturer. I found it on Summit Racing, but this is just half inch bar two and it's bent around the drive shaft. And it does this thing, I'm gonna drill some holes here now that I've bolted up. But all in all, you know, you end up with a bolt-in option that uh, that uh, you don't have to weld and should do the job. And then something to note with these drive shaft, people are always kind of talking about where to put them. I'm putting mine towards the front because if this transmission you joint lets go, you know, the tire's going to keep spinning and it's going to flop around. So you want it towards the front, whereas in the, the brakes in the back, you know, the tail shaft will either come out or your foot's you know controlling the gas so if you do flop around back here you know it's only going to be the engine rpm and your foot so i think this will still catch some of it but again it's more important to have this closer to the front on these short drive shafts i think so that's my opinion anyway all right it's all painted up and ready to go so i just thought i'd do take a shot of here on my workbench before i put it on uh, if you're curious of the dimensions i'm using here the start of the bend down here, and then to the bend, looking at about 20 inches, and then the height ends up being about. I was shooting for a three and a quarter, but uh, again, this is some pretty hefty iron, so I ended up about three and an eighth. So if that's out of focus there. Anyway, um, and then uh, as far as the flat area up here on top, uh, I measured near the trainee. It was about nine and a half to 10 inches max. So this, basically I marked up my bend to bend to be about 10 inches. So if you do the math, reverse math, you're looking at roughly five inches to six inches, up to a three and then back. All right, this is how things look all assembled. It's all together. The only thing I haven't checked is uh, clearance as the rear end moves up and down. But you know, it looks pretty good in my opinion. And uh, yeah, we'll see, but everything bolted up real nice. I'm really happy how this thing turned out. He's really you're only adding, you know, this much, um, you know, a quarter inch plus the bolt head below the bottom of the um, the bracket. And this thing again, it's gonna, it's rock solid. It's with that steel. So to all you Mark IV builders, I'd recommend taking this road. I'm I'm just happy with how it, uh, how it turned out. It's almost like it was meant to be. Alright, thanks for watching.